Renault has a long and detailed history within Formula One, being associated with the sport in both constructor and engine supplier roles since 1977. Gliding through their entire F1 history would be impractical, so for the purposes of this episode, we will focus on the F1 car on which this model is based. That is the 2005 Renault R25. Renault's R25 is loaded with so many distinctions, it's hardly surprising the stunner of a race vehicle is considered important within F1 history. Perhaps the most important distinction for some would be that this car carried Fernando Alonso to his first driver's championship in 2005, ending Michael Schumacher's dominant five-year run in a Ferrari. Alonso repeated success in 2006 with the R26, before changing teams and moving to McLaren. And as a side note, unfortunately from then on, Alonso seemed to be plagued with either poor choices or bad luck or both. This car delivered Renault's first driver's and constructor's titles for a team racing under a French license. Renault has, of course, had previous success as an engine supplier, particularly in the mid-90s where they won titles with the Williams team. The R25 was the last V10 F1 car to win a title as regulations meant that engines downsized to V8s for 2006. And today, of course, we have those farty hybrid engines that we all love so much. The R25 also provided Michelin's first of two titles since their return to F1 in 2001 after a 16 season absence. Their second title also arrived with the R26 the following year. The R25 was the first constructors winning F1 car since 1991 that was not designed by either Adrian Newey or Rory Byrne. And no doubt if you're familiar with F1, those names are probably very well known to you. Lastly, the R25 was the last Renault F1 car to use a 6-speed gearbox before the mandatory switch to a 7-speed box in 2006. This model is part of the Formula One model car collection, distributed in South Africa by Jacklin Enterprises. The models in the series are crafted by IXO models, which means good quality but not top of the range. The R25 was love at first sight for me. I am crazy about that blue and yellow paint job. It looks stunning and the model captures that very well. I remember when I used to watch Formula One back in 2005. Every time this Renault came on screen, I just loved it. It was so bold, beautiful. Even when displayed alongside the other models in this F1 car collection, this one stands out. It captures my sight. The R25 is securely mounted upon its plastic base. Less secure is the lid that fits over the model. I have found these F1 collection models to be a bit hit and miss in this department. Some of the lids are wonderfully tight, while others seem almost too large. They fall off so easily. Nothing that a little tape won't fix of course, but certainly not ideal. Exterior details on F1 cars, particularly modern ones, is very important and in this regard the R25 does not disappoint. All of her wings, antennae and curved aerodynamic components are present and they are securely built. I have no gripe with the build quality of the model itself. It feels sturdy and well put together. Removed from its base, car looks amazing and it rolls freely on its wheels. However, interior detail is proving to be a negative for many of these subscription based models and the R25 definitely is within that bracket. Now I know some people are thinking you've got to accept a compromise when you're spending less on these models. They can't have incredible interior detail which I understand. However, some of the other cars in these subscriptions maybe not the same subscription but certainly other ones have proven to have good detail so I think it is possible um, and I think it's better than just having a piece of black plastic that's molded to look like a steering wheel in a chair so I, I think a little bit of stickers or something just goes a long way to make it look a bit better so with that said this car does have a place in your collection and that place is to keep it on your shelf flanked by our sister models that are also part of the collection and admire her from a sideways angle. There really is nothing to see in the cockpit, but from far, she still remains very beautiful. 
In recent years, F1 has become a little diluted. I appreciate the quest for efficiency and cost cutting, I really do. But it has left us with cars that just seem to lack something of the unleashed energy that these slightly older models had. The R25 is a reminder of that time, for me at least. Today's F1 cars they may be a bit faster around the track, but the excitement factor for these older machines remains extreme. And that just about does it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. In our next episode, we will be looking at another modern car from the WRC Rally Championship. And I do hope you will join me for that one. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. Consider subscribing to the channel so that you can see other videos from the same series. And I do hope that I will see you again soon.